Uh, one thing kicking around over the weekend and certainly in social media, though I seem, seem to be spending a little less time there, uh, is the issue of Māori place names or, or Māori signage on the roads and stuff and all the virtue signalling Pākehā lefty to Rayo speakers have been going, I'm such a wonderful person because I can speak the Rayo. That makes me a wonderful, decent human being and all you other white, racist, supremacist, post-colonial people should be good and virtuous like me because I love the Māori and I understand the Māori and I understand what it is to be a New Zealander. So that's what all the Wokies have been saying. I think most of us have been just been getting on with our lives and hoping we don't get a ticket when we read a uh, road sign. But it does and it has highlighted... A growing division or growing questions and issues in New Zealand around race, ethnicity. And whilst, and I actually take issue with this, people say we're founded on the Treaty of Waitangi. I think our Westminster democracy is founded on a whole lot of other things, uh, amongst them Magna Carta and, and other issues. Um, but the Treaty of Waitangi increasingly being, increasingly being used and interpreted by our judiciary, by our politicians, certainly by our public service, um, as something which creates a special set of circumstances around things Māori in terms of governance. And when I talk about governance, I'm talking about... Um, uh, I'm talking about, like, at council level, we have special Māori wards now. We already, and have had some time, had special Māori seats. But there is now a requirement across all sorts of areas of government that all sorts of things have regard to the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi. And that is clearly, and including road signs, one imagines. So that is causing some problems. And someone who has written uh, recently, we have this up on our website, um, about the effect of this interpretation of the treaty and why the effect it may have in particular on our legal system is Gary Judd KC. That's King's Council these days, used to be Queen's Council. And Gary Judd uh, joins us on the line now. Gary, welcome to the platform. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning, Sean. All right. So, Gary, you would argue that this new interpretation of the treaty damages democracy and perhaps the practice of the law in New Zealand? Uh, yes, I think it does both. Um, Gary, just but, checking, are you on the, on the speakerphone? Uh, well, it's all you're going to get. Um, have, you not a, a mouth piece? have you not got a handpiece? Yeah. Yeah. No. Is that Peter? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, Sorry, Gary, do you, not, do you not have a handpiece? No, I'm talking into my phone. Oh, okay. You can't hold the phone yeah. up to you, though, and talk to it normally. Yeah. It's just, it's a bit yeah. echoey. Uh, well, I'm sorry about that. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. The, uh, what I, uh, whilst uh, what you say, I agree with both of what propositions that you put. What I think is really important this morning to talk about is what's happening within the legal profession because mm. uh, there are changes afoot being promoted by the New Zealand Law Society. Now, one of the things that I've heard you say from time to time is that uh, you couldn't possibly say something. Well, I, <coughs> I'm not a politician, so I couldn't possibly say something which a politician <laughs> said, said over the weekend, which someone sent to me yesterday. Which was? And, and this is um, Stuart Smith, who is the National Member of Parliament for Kaikoura, and he sent out a newsletter uh, to presumably his constituents, which contains some comments on this issue, which I think are absolutely spot on, but of course I can't say them. Anyway, if I can just read a couple of paragraphs of yeah. what he said, I think it will actually set the stage for yeah. other matters you might want to discuss with me. So he starts off by saying, professional bodies have a crucial role in establishing standards of conduct and protecting the reputation of their respective professions. 
it is expected that the directives remain apolitical and do not infringe upon the freedom of their members to hold their own political views. However, the recent proposal by the New Zealand Law Society to introduce a new statutory duty for lawyers to adhere to the principles of Tutoriti or Waitangi is a highly controversial and a politically motivated move. It appears to be driven by the influence of woke socialists who seek to advance their own agenda rather than prioritise the best interests of the people they serve. And he goes on a bit later. Despite the fact that a significant majority of surveyed lawyers oppose incorporating treaty principles into the regulatory structure, the Law Society Review Panel is undeterred. The opposition is well founded as the treaty itself does not contain any specific principles and the evolving nature of these principles makes it challenging for lawyers to navigate without the risk of breaching the law society's okay. rules. Gary, let's let's get so back just, to the stage to, to the genesis of this thing. There is work un, being undertaken by the law society which might result in a law change requiring all lawyers in New Zealand to have regard to the principles of the Treaty of the Waitangi in the discharge of their duties or as they go about, about their business. Yes, that's correct. And the last paragraph of Stuart Smith's letter, which I was going to read to you, actually yeah. hones in on this particular point because he says the inclusion of an author of Hei Pua Pua a controversial report on the panel, that's the panel which was supposed to be receiving submissions and... Uh, yeah, hang on, let's keep it simple, shall we, shall we, Gary? Yeah. yeah. The inclusion of an author of Hei Pua Pua, and that it is Professor Jacinta Ruru, uh, on the panel is not surprising as it aligns with the underlying motivations driving this proposal. It raises concerns about the ideological biases at play and the potential influence they may have on the final recommendations. So at the moment, this report has been uh, put out. Um, The Law Society has asked for submissions, uh, and I think that probably anyone uh, can make a submission, but it's primarily directed to to lawyers. And uh, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, submissions uh, uh, may be made to the Law Society and the time for making those submissions closes on Wednesday. Yeah. So if anyone... So what does this report from the Law Society or the subcommittee of the Law Society, what does it recommend as regards lawyers and their relationship with the Treaty of Waitangi or the so-called principles of the Treaty of Waitangi? It says, uh, it recommends that it it be embedded in legislation that lawyers must have regard to the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi. Uh, It also uh, recommends the setting up of a separate regulatory authority whose members would be appointed by the Minister of Justice. And... Uh, this gets on to... Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Just, 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 just back up the bus there. So, Gary, what would this separate regulatory body regulate? Lawyers. So what they can and can't do. And uh, potentially, uh, if they did not, or if it was thought by someone that they weren't uh, practising in accordance with the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi, they could... Uh, make a complaint and disciplinary action could be taken against the lawyers. Those are, that's the potential um, for uh, what is being proposed by uh, the independent, so-called independent panel and appears to be well on the way to being adopted by the Law Society and recommended to, uh, to the government. And there seems to be a degree of urgency about making this recommendation to the government which I suspect is motivated by the fact that they know that a government comprising Labor, the Greens and the Party Māori uh, will in fact be very happy to adopt changes which forces lawyers to uh, 
in effect comply with whatever is said to be the principles of the of the Treaty of Wine. Okay. All right. So you are saying that is the drive of this reform, so it would require a change to what? The statute or the laws that govern the practice of being a lawyer in New Zealand? Yes, that's right. And at the moment, the the existing legislation, which was uh, enacted in 2006, states uh, in Section 3 that there are certain fundamental principles which uh, lawyers are expected to abide by. And the first one, and in my view, the most important one, is... A, 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 a fundamental obligation to uphold the rule of law and the administration of justice. Now, the rule of law might sound a bit arcane, but all it really means in this context is that everyone is born equal and is required to be treated equally under the law. And it is that fundamental obligation on lawyers and the fundamental constitutional principle of New Zealand, which these proposals undermine. Because but Gary, isn't proposing... the treaty a legal document? Uh, well, Surely it, it is part it, of our law. Well, that's debatable, but but even if, it, even if it is part of our law in the sense that you're talking about, it actually promotes equality as, as well. The Treaty of Waitangi is is in is consonant with uh, the rule of law's requirement for equality. And if I can just <clears throat> mention something which a great Maori statesman actually said back in 1922, so that's over 100 years ago, but only 80 years uh, after the treaty was signed in, in 1840. In a little booklet called the Treaty of Waitangi, he said, and this is Sarafarana Nata, he said that Article 3 of the treaty, and I quote, represents the greatest benefit bestowed upon the Māori people by Her Majesty the Queen. This article states that the Māori and Pākehā are equal before the law, that is, they are to share the rights and privileges of British subjects. So <clears throat> my point is that the treaty and the rule of law are in harmony. They both call for equality under the law. And that is what these proposals, which the Law Society seems to be uh, on track to recommend to government, uh, undermine. Well, I'm just they trying to figure out how that can be, Gary, given that you've just told me that the treaty is all about equality. What's wrong with having the treaty mentioned in how you practice law in New Zealand if it's all about equality? It's because what has been brought into New Zealand law are something called the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi. Ah. Not the Treaty of Waitangi itself, but the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi. And the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi have come to be what various activists say they are, and in particular the, the Waitangi Tribunal, which has got more and more radical as the years have gone by, and we've got to a stage now where there are some who actually claim that the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi uh, include the right of the so-called indigenous people to take back power and control. And what that means, of course, is to take power and control, take back, well, the back part of take back simply is the purported justification for being able to you know, cut a, a swathe through the principle of equality, that we are all born equal with no one having the right to dominate or exercise power or control over another simply because of their ancestry. Right. And this, now, now, this is fundamental. It's fundamental yeah. and it's something which has been brought come to New Zealand from, from England uh, with the treaty and it's what's being denied now and it's, it is very, very distressing to see that the legal profession it seems to be being railroaded into a situation where 
they have to support this nonsense. Yeah. Gary, uh, anyone else concerned about it that you know, or are you a lone voice in the wilderness at present? I'm not a lone voice in the, the wilderness, but probably I'm a bit more outspoken a voice than some of the others. But what I really want, and I, I um, just want to stress this, I want any lawyers who are listening to make a submission to the Law Society by Wednesday. And if those are, who are listening who are not lawyers, get hold of your lawyers and tell them that you want them to make a submission to the Law Society to um, get rid of this uh, nonsense. Now, just to... Uh, they, they can do that by uh, sending it to independent view, uh, sorry, independent review, that's ID, that I, independence review, one word, yeah. at lawsociety.org.nz. Now, if anyone wants to actually read some of the stuff that I've written on this, yeah. this they can actually get me well, they can get to it. Well, we've published, going, it, we've published it on the platform no, that, today. That, we'll that, 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 yeah, yeah that's, a, no, that's a different document, actually. The one that you've published is pretty important because it's actually saying that uh, Karen McAnulty's uh, denial that we are entitled to democracy in New Zealand because of the treaty is a load of nonsense. That's what that article is about. But the ones that are more... Uh, concerned with the law society aspect, you can find if you go if you put uh, this address into um, your browser, Gary Judd KC. Yeah, Gary, I don't have the time for an ad for your uh, for your your browser thing. What I want to ask no, very fundamentally for New Zealanders listening: if this were to change, this change in the statute to recognise the principles of the treaty for lawyers to do so. Would that mean that there might be instances or could, could potentially be instances where your lawyer is representing you but doesn't put your interest first or puts the principles of the treaty ahead of their obligation to represent your best interests? Yeah, that is certainly a possibility because if the um, treaty becomes um, something which lawyers must have regard to, uh, well, the principles of the treaty, sorry, uh, principles of the treaty are something lawyers must have regard to that may compromise their ability to represent their clients in the way in which they might otherwise do. What's the timeline on this legislation? Could it be passed before the election? Poss possibly, if, if the government gave it priority and the um, letter which went out to members of the... Auckland branch of the uh, New Zealand Law Society uh, said or indicated that they were wanting to um, get uh, submissions to the Minister of Justice in order that it may be put into the legislative timetable. Now, the way I read that is they actually want to get it off quickly to the present Minister of Justice so yeah. that the government can promote this legislation and hope and get it yeah. passed. And who is election. steering this? Who's in charge of this at the Law Society? Well, I guess it's the Council of the Law Society, uh, which is uh, an interesting sort of um, body because it really isn't very democratic and it, in, it imports all sorts of different interests. But uh, it, I, cannot, I can't point you to a particular individual all I can say is that uh, it is the Law Society as an organisation through its um, uh, how can it, ruling, ruling council. council I yeah. it, yeah. I'm just wondering where this idea came for, from for this law change. Uh, well, I think it actually probably um, had its genesis through the influence of very uh, of various Maori lawyer organisations. I mean, Which what ones? We've, what, well, it was the Maori Law Association and the various mm. others which are connected with it. But uh, I, this is something which has been creeping up on New Zealanders. And it was really, a, I only started to become aware of it with the Three Waters legislation and uh, reading an article in a publication. <laughs> 
which talked about the democratic deficit in the three waters legislation, which um, made me interested. And so I started looking into it. And when I did, I found that there were all sorts of things happening everywhere without uh, within you know within society to promote um, this idea that it's right and proper that the Maori people, who, however you might define them, um, should um, take back power and control in New Zealand. And, I mean, that sounds extreme, but it's, you know, it's there in black and white. And um, uh, it seems to, an idea which seems to be supported in the highest quarters. I hear you, Gary, and I thank you very much indeed uh, for your time this morning. And my texts indicate New Zealanders are very interested in this development, and we will try and get some comment out of the New Zealand Law Society as to why they are proceeding down what feels to me like a somewhat dangerous course. Or on a on, yeah, well, well, if you're going to do that, probably the person that you should try and contact is the president of the New Zealand Law Society. His name just escapes me for the yeah. moment, but he's a member of a yeah. law firm in Dunedin. Um, but I do know that the Auckland District Law Society's uh, Law News has endeavoured to um, get um, uh, this fellow to engage with them, and he won't do so. All right. And of course, that is, that is typical of people who are pushing particular ideologies, that they actually won't engage and stand up and explain why they are uh, engaging in this sort of activity, and in this particular case, why they are saying that some people in the New Zealand community have greater rights, are superior in terms of their right to exercise dominance and control than other people. Yeah, which and is a dangerous, I, I, a dangerous precedent, Gary. We are uh, out of time, Gary. I thank you for talking to us. Gary Judd QC, who raises, I think, an incredibly, imp incredibly important point. Um, somewhat surreptitious, I would say, though I'm sure the Law Society will talk to us, plans to change the statute governing the practice of law in New Zealand to give effect or to recognise that you must practice law in accordance with the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi. Well, hell, we don't even know what those principles are. They seem to change and move like the wind and tides. Uh, and anything that doesn't put equity of citizenship at the basis of our system of law, equality before the law, is bound to be a failure and to be bad for this country.